people will get to the stage where they're willing to kill one another over the worries, they should be put in a nice quiet home in the country with kindly doctors and beautiful nurses and good sedatives. But generally they end up in government mansions and start bombing one another. Or they lead religious crusades for the true faith and kill one another with swords or some such thing. consistent message in his work. Does he have a consistent message? Maybe. Maybe that's the message. Nothing is truly consistent. There are no absolute yeses or absolute noes. There are probabilities and strong maybes and weak maybes. But uh, maybe if we all said maybe more often, the world might be a saner place. Uh, Pope Bob is certainly uh, been able to um, weave a certain magical spell using nothing but logic. And what is logic, you ask? Why, nothing but magic. As Ezra Pound writes in one of the latter cantos, the water bugs written show on the bright rock below him. Duh, interaction. You don't have the water bugs written on the bright rock without the water bug, the rock and the sun to cast a shadow. And of course you need a planet that will produce a water bug and a rock, and you need human eyes to see it all. That's Tao Da, interacting, processing. One of the introductory koans in Zen Buddhism, who is the great magician who makes the grass green? And you need a human brain, dogs see grass differently. After all, you need a human brain and you need the grass hitched together to make the yoga, which we call the greenness of the grass. Now, everybody thinks it's very hard to be a mystic. You've got to go through a hell of a lot of effort to realize your union with everything. But actually, you're experiencing your union with everything all the time. Otherwise, you wouldn't be experiencing anything. <laughs> you make the grass green. You make your highs and you make your lows. But you don't do it alone. You're making it out of your union with the universe. And so everything is a coincidence of contraries. It's a coincidence of you being there and the universe being there. And everything is one at the same time because there's no green without the grass and there's no green without you. So the greenness is a transaction that ties you and the grass together. There's an infinite expanse of signals flooding into our nervous system and being processed by a higher neural centers in the brain. We're all organizing and orchestrating it according to our own particular life history, our genetic background, our early imprints, our conditioning, our learning, and any re-imprinting techniques we may have learned since then. So we're all living in different worlds. It's astonishing that we can communicate at all. But you are the co-creator When you have seen the one who makes the grass green, it's like meeting your own father in a crowd. You'll have no doubt whatsoever. Nasruddin went galloping through Baghdad one day on his donkey. He went up every street and into every alley and across every plaza. He was galloping all over this, every place he'd go in an unending race and hunt and search. Everybody got curious, everybody came out of their houses and they were all yelling, Nasruddin, Nasruddin, what are you looking for? And he yelled, like I lost my donkey and I'm looking for it. See, the, uh, the donkey represents the, what everybody is looking for, which right? is a mystical school. It's the answer to all the riddles of the universe. And you hunt for it east, west, north, south, up, down, everywhere you can imagine. All the time it's carrying you around. It's 
it's the human nervous system which takes out of the infinity of the universe the little reality tunnel that you, that you consider reality which is your creation and which you think is the whole of the universe unless you've been through a Sufi school or studied general semantics or did a lot of Zen meditation or dropped LSD once or twice then you realize the universe is much bigger and more complicated than any little map we can make of it. The map is not the territory. The words that describe the map are not the territory. They're even further from the territory. <laughs> what I've been doing is trying to put the donkey on your back in such a way you'll never forget. The master, the great magician who makes the grass green, the one who creates the whole universe you live in. Interacting, processing, Tao, Da. That's all I tune in, interacting, processing. No nouns anywhere. Never met a noun yet. I, I, I often thought of myself as, in terms of that old Chinese proverb, the wise are, the wise become Confucian in good times, Buddhist in bad times, and Taoist in old age. I always had a lot more sympathy for that, those three religions in quotes. And that's any of the Occidental ones like Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all of which seem to be fanatical, intolerant, violence prone. This whole Judeo Christian monotheistic trip has been the worst nightmare this planet has ever endured. They, they just never stop killing one another. Meanwhile, the Confucians, the Taoists, and the Buddhists, each in their own way, have tried, tried to create a peaceful and amicable society. I try, try to create a peaceful and amicable society. And what I like in Buddhism is the basic idea of forgiveness because nobody realizes how wonderful it is until they begin to develop some talent at actually doing it. Because the more you forgive, the less burdens you got to carry around with you. When you reach the point where you can forgive everybody, you're almost entirely free of burdens. What's important to me at this point in my life Making really sure that I have forgiven all anybody who's ever hurt me or seemed to be an enemy. But uh, making sure I'm, I have nothing but forgiveness for everything. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think it's a very liberating experience to realize how little you really know and how much of the time you're just guessing. One thing that makes forgiveness easier, and believe me, life without forgiveness ain't worth living. Also, it keeps you from acting like too much of a damn fool if you're not really sure. <laughs> People who are really sure are all act like damn fools at least half of the time. Maybe more than that. I haven't, I haven't really studied the matter that closely. <laughs> I have to think some more about that. How often does being sure about everything make you act like a damn fool? Probably about 90% of the time, and that's, what, and that's what's wrong with the planet. I am not going to commit a federal crime. You want to see a federal crime committed? Yes. This is a pain pill provided by the Women's Alliance for Medical Marijuana. Keeps my legs from hurting me too much. Mm -hmm.